Appreciate kind you. of like it's it's like Waco except without the tanks. <laughs> yeah. Hey, thanks. All right. Do you know that they have face recognition? This is how uh, how secluded you you can still be in this kind of a country and still have government uh, come and take you out of your home. For how much? For the grand prize of five thousand six hundred and some dollars. Yeah, I mean you can't escape the big the hand of the big brother uh, uh, anywhere. Uh, you're I want to comment and say that I think this is a total abuse of power from the police force. I think they made a major mistake here. I think this is reminds me of Waco, Ruby Ridge, um, you know, and the thing is the guy owed less than $6,000 to the government in taxes, so think about how much this whole operation costs. It, I mean, it costs way more than what this guy owed on his house. Uh, right now we got people that owe uh, banks and, and that uh, on mortgages, and what does the government do? They bail these people out, but yet here we got a guy that owes less than $6,000 on his house, and the government comes over and uh, forcibly removes him from his house and you know, almost has a huge standoff where, you know, people could have been killed. I mean, this is, uh, to me, it's just, it's a terrible incident, and our, our police force should be ashamed of themselves. Well, there's this, let's be very clear here what happened, though. He was not forcibly removed from his house. He was served Oh, in, sure he was. He, they burned no, his house down. No, no, he was, uh, his house burned to the ground. Uh, whatever house or habitat he lived in burned to the ground. Okay. Uh, so they don't know what he was shooting. And so they can evict him from his house when he owes less than six thousand dollars, even though his property is wealth way more than that. Well, see, so they I can take over his whole property. Right. I don't agree with that aspect of it. I, I, what you're saying about that is true. But well, do you have a right to defend your property? They were coming to take the guy from his property, and you denied that the whole time I was on the line with you. So right. I, yeah. No, he did. He did correct me. The, and one point needs to be made here, though. The paper and the police were trying to hit on the point that this guy was an anti-government person. Now, if you have anti-government views, does that mean you're not know, dangerous? And they also talked about how he was known to have a rifle. I mean, are they picking on the people now that are, are one, anti-government, and also, two, that if they own firearms? Yes, our founding fathers were anti-government, if that's what that guy's original crime was. <laughs> and as far as paying taxes, you know, some people don't necessarily like to pay taxes to a tyrannical government that uses the money to kill babies and, and a million Iraqis. Our founding fathers gave us a free country. Don't we have a choice anymore? Was the guy trying to mind his own business or what? And not pay his taxes. And that's fine, but you know, you, know, you get up to the point, then you got to go through the legal system to make an argument for not paying your taxes, but you don't shoot at the police. Our government has turned into what our founding fathers fought against. The proof of it is, look, look, look at our open borders. Are, are our open borders good for us? Is that $9 trillion debt, is that smart? No. No, it's not. Absolutely not. And do, is there anything left of a free country? What aspect of, of our life does not the government have its nose into? Uh huh. Well, I, I completely agree with you, but is that a call for armed revolution? What did our founding fathers do? Is that a call for armed revolution? What did our founding fathers do? Are you saying yes? Yeah. Yes, sir, I am. All right. The cross talk you up. Calls and start with Mike in Wisconsin. You're on Free Talk Live. Mike. Hey, guys. Uh,. Yeah. I wanted to talk to you about the situation about the uh, property tax standoff. You guys are talking about it on Monday night a little bit. Yeah, there was a guy that uh, owed about five grand in property taxes, and I believe it was uh, yeah, I think it was in Wisconsin. Uh, yeah, it was a uh, half hour from where I am right now. Actually, I oh, I've been pretty involved in the situation. Uh, I uh, actually went down to his property after the standoff and tried to get some video and that. And t- took some video, put it up on YouTube. Uh, the cops wouldn't let us see the house. Uh, they didn't want us to see what they did to it, you know, his house. And hmm. uh, but we did talk to a couple of his neighbors and got some interviews. And um, the uh, local paper just reported today that uh, one of the motivating factors for this guy being, you know, mad at the government was they were working on a road, a major highway, by his property, and in the construction of it, they ruined his well. So he uh, couldn't get any water to his place, and they never fixed it. And there's another wow. reason he didn't want to pay any taxes. Uh, Oh yeah, my goodness! The local paper just reported that today, but uh, yeah. so the uh, so the the town comes along, they destroy his well, and then they try to take his house away for not uh, not paying uh, you know property taxes. Right, he did and the giving one money thing. to the same organization that destroyed his well. Right, he did the one thing that he could do in that situation was say, well, if you're not going to help fix this problem, I'm not going to pay you anymore. What am I paying you guys for? What else yeah. could you do? These are a bunch of bad people. Yep. <laughs> No, I mean it's just, it's totally it's unreal, and 
a lot of people are like, you know, all the local media and that around here are saying, well, we need to, we need to, uh, you know, applaud the law enforcement for, for saving and protecting us and risking their lives for us and that, you know, over this. And as far as I'm concerned, I wasn't at danger at all in this situation. Nope. You know, if they would, this guy wasn't paying for his, you know, property tax. I yeah, mean, they didn't have to put their lives on the line. Everything would have been fine if they just left <laughs> the guy alone. And, and, Ian and Mark, how, how much do you think this operation costs? The total cost of this, three SWAT teams, three armored vehicles, you know, come over and collect the debt of five thousand dollars or what? Roughly well, I know that uh, I, I don't know, know but I but I, I know when you're breaking out the tanks that you're getting into the big bucks. Well, plus, and it's not like he lived in New York City where they have a huge budget. He lived out in some rural area. I mean, what's the population yeah. of this area? They had to drive the tanks there from God knows where. <laughs> and the, 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 the town, it's right outside of this small town. It's about five hundred people. This is, I mean, if, if you go to YouTube, <laughs> I, I posted it on the, the on the boards. On my video, you see how rural this area is. Yeah. And it's a wooded area. It's totally, I mean, you cannot get away from the government in this country. If you want to be no. secluded and get you, away from it, you, you can't, cannot do it. it, it, it's, it the, the time that you could move out to the woods and be left alone by uh, mommy government is over. Now all it's going to do is seclude you when it, they come after as you. As far as Costco, I, uh, I'm, I'm having some guys put in uh, a, a, a little area. Maybe it's uh, circular, 100, uh, 100 feet um, uh, in its diameter, sort of, sort of circular. And uh, they're using a front end loader and a, a backhoe to do that and it's going to take them one day three grand and they're giving me a deal so i can only imagine what it costs for tanks which are more scarce than front end loaders by yeah. a long by a long and they got to repair them too i mean because the windshields were shot out of a lot of these they got to repair these things and i mean it's just uh, unbelievable to think about the total cost to collect this debt Wow, um, and another thing that I'm really concerned about the situation is there the the article that I'm re- that was in our local paper today says that the media has been trying to get a hold of this guy Robert Bayless is his name, mm-hmm. and they're not letting him talk to the media. Um, they're not letting anybody talk to him, and they're waiting on his a uh, uh, court appointed uh, attorney. So this guy is totally on his own right now. So he's completely um, shut off from communication with uh, right. other people. Are, are you not innocent until proven guilty? Um, so called. That's what they claim. And, which and we know in many cases it's not the case. Murder charges. They're now. bringing him up on attempted murder charges for shooting at the cops. Yes. Right. Right. Oh, um, even so though frustrating. They were coming to, to forcibly remove him. They had a warrant out. They claimed that they owned his land because they so called evicted him earlier this year because he was behind on his you know property taxes. Mm-hmm. So they claimed his land even though his land was what was. Worth well over the you know the amount of debt that he owed, so they right. can claim your whole property. I mean, wow, um, That's in so an age sad. Where These are bad, bad people. That uh, I I don't think not every town government would have done what that town government did, but there are plenty of them that would. Absolutely, there are, uh, there's probably more that would than wouldn't. Yep. But these are bad, bad people, and these are the kind of people that drive a man to the point where that you know that uh, that mayor over I don't know, I think it was Missouri where the guy walks in and uh, shoots up the uh, town council meeting and shoots the mayor. Yeah. Oh, yeah That's yeah. what drives men to do that crap. Well, the mayor was the only one that survived that, by the because, way. He shot at six oh, people. And, by, by the way, <laughs> t- take a look at take a look at the two circumstances and. And you know it's difficult to say who came out better. The one guy ended up dead, but he's not in. Uh, you know, the, the one perpetrator ended up dead, but he's not sitting in prison. One can make an argument that dead is uh, you know superior to prison, and um, he managed to take out six bureaucrats. The other guy, he's sitting in prison, didn't take out anybody because he waited for the cops to come get him. Right, it's just a mess. And, Mike, and, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, Ian. Uh, uh, well, you were going to make a point. I was just going to ask you to keep us up to date on this situation, if you would. Uh, for the yeah, um, I'm re- I'm going to try to make it down there again and see if I can get you know the actual shot of his burnt house. Uh, we got it from a distance, but oh, that's right, you know, it caught I, on fire. It caught on fire, it during it, right? <laughs> right with the tear gas. I mean, um, it's really something that I'm glad for your show that's able to talk about it a little bit, get some national attention. But um, I mean, we can't. We got to do. I don't know what we can do, but we just got to well, get. The I know what out we can do. It. We can. Uh, you can move to New Hampshire, join the Free State Project, and then we can all make a stand for liberty. Mm-hmm. And because it's like Mark said, you can't get away from these people. You can't get away from these little tyrants. Uh, these people no. in these local governments, whether it's a small town or a big city, they're all the same. They all want to rule over other people's lives. And so there's no amount of running at this point that is going to be successful. We're going to have to stand and and start talking about liberty again. I don't. I don't want to say stand and fight because we're not going to actually do any fighting because we're 
right. in involved in a non Stand up and say no. Right. I'm not taking it anymore. That's right. Every time, everything the government touches turns to crap, say and no. you're not touching anything more. Say no to government and say yes to freedom, and that's what we're doing up here. And call again and let us know what happens. All right, Mike? Thanks, guys. Thanks for the Thanks. call. 800-259-9231. Because I don't want it to have to come to some sort of violent situation. Because as we've seen, you you lose either way. It's like you said, you either end up killing yourself or being killed, or you uh, you end up in a, in a jail cell. You lose your home, you lose your family, you lose everything you've worked toward, mm-hmm. just because you want to live free. It doesn't make any sense. So violence is not going to be the solution here. That's what their M.O. is. Yeah. That's what they do. And we are not going to lower right. ourselves to in, that level. In, the, in this circumstance, the, um, the cops came to get the guy off the property. He shoots. Um, and the, the newspaper is lauding the police over right. keeping all of us safe from the guy who was on his own property shooting at armed invaders. Okay? He probably couldn't even shower because they broke his well. I, you know, and the newspaper talks about how much safer we are. Well, how are we safe? There was a guy protecting his land. So um, you you just can't win. That for some reason the the media they just oh, don't we'll see win. It. they don't no I mean you win. can't see it you can't win with violence right. Let's continue with your phone calls. You can bring up anything. In fact, one could argue. By the way, we've already won. It's just they haven't figured it out yet. Uh, we hey, actually hey. talked about Mr. Bayless in the past when the incident actually went down. Now we've got a little bit more detail thanks to William Norman Grigg at the Pro Libertate blog, which is freedominourtime.blogspot.com. He starts out with a, a couple of quotes, one from Nietzsche. Everything the state says is a lie, and everything it has, it has stolen. Wow. And as he says, terror must be maintained, or the empire is doomed. It is the logic of history, said that quote. So, who is maintaining the terror anyway? Is it the terrorists, or is it the government people? I think it will self-seem necessary. Now, if you would believe what the government says, and if you believe what the government says, you're a dupe. But if you believe what the government says, uh, Mr. Bayless, Robert Bayless, this man we're about to tell you about, is a bad, bad man and a, a threat to society. Well, we'll tell you exactly what he did, allegedly, here in a moment. Couldn't the county simply have paid him for the damage to his well? That's the question that urges itself upon me as I sift through the rubble of last spring's confrontation in rural, Wis- rural Wisconsin between Robert Bayless and, well, at last count, roughly two dozen local, county, and state agencies. The anti-Bayless coalition included elements from no fewer than six SWAT teams and the prominent use of three Bearcat, which is a ballistic-engineered armored response and rescue counterattack truck, military assault vehicle. Surely, Mr. Bayless must have been a singularly fearsome fugitive in order to trigger such a huge deployment. One would think. Indeed, and one would be wrong. Prior to his arrest on April 3rd, the diminutive and reclusive Mr. Bayless, either 60 or 61 years old, depending on the media account you read, lived in a small ramshackle abode on 18 acres outside Viola, Wisconsin. We can appreciate just how pathetic and fragile the Bayless dwelling was by the fact that it was never referred to as an armed compound during the police siege. <laughs> right, because every time uh, the, the police are, you know, somebody's uh, holed up in their house and has some kind of uh, tax dispute, it's always, always referred to as a compound. A former volunteer firefighter who had served as a sonar officer in the Navy, Mr. Bayless had a heart attack about a decade ago. Reputed to be a world-class amateur computer technician, Bayless had been reduced to grubbing out a meager living by picking apples in the fall and doing whatever other odd jobs he could find. Press accounts dutifully describe Bayless as who uh, as someone who possessed strong anti-government attitudes, which to genuinely intelligent people is a bit like being singled out for having a healthy immune system. Unlike the stereotypical antisocial recluse of lore, however, Bayless is considered to be very personable, outgoing and generally respectful of the preening, oddly dressed, and self-important parasites who insist on being called the authorities, judges, police, and that ilk. I like him, commented substitute librarian Judy McConaughey about Bayless following his arrest. He's extremely gentle, kind, thoughtful, respectful. It's only when he's confronted with what he thinks is illegitimate abuse of the Constitution that he gets very upset. Most of his neighbors know him and like him. He's basically a peaceable person. I would take him into my home. Eugene That's Winchell, pretty, pretty high praise. Yep, Eugene Winchell, who picked apples with Bayless in local orchards, allowed that he was maybe a little eccentric, but he was good to work with, always with a smile on his face. I don't think there was a bad bone in his body. 
Some people just don't like to be forced to do things. And, you know, I don't think that here in a free country uh, that should be an issue. I mean, how can you – now, if somebody uh, enters into a contract, they should be required sure, to – Sure, sure, uh, if you've you agreed know, fulfill, to something. Fulfill the contract. But when it comes to, you know, property taxes, I never signed anything saying that I'd pay for these uh, people's kids to go to school. And I never um, signed anything that says that i pay for roads that I don't use. Well, perhaps some uh, defender of property taxes will call in to tell us that what the police did to this man, Mr. Robert Bayless, this kind gentleman uh, that lived out in the middle of nowhere – that what they did to him was okay and that they support it. The number here is 800-259-9231. We'll get to the details of that here in a moment. So one more neighbor, Al Cutler, one of uh, Bayless's neighbors, says, I think he was always poor, but he wouldn't take money from anybody. He wired my shed in exchange for some firewood, and he would help just about anybody who needed help. In his previous court appearances, which have been plentiful for someone who's never imposed on anybody, let alone committed an offense against person or property, Bayless has displayed tremendous respect for judges and court officials. Given his polite and deferential nature, Bayless seemed to be the last person who would ever throw a few rounds of lead at local law enforcement officers, as he reportedly did on March 31st, when four sheriff's deputies invaded his property for the purpose of evicting him from his home. Sounds like one could look at that as uh, trespassing. Yeah, absolutely, unless you believe that the government owns all property. That's, essen- that, that's essentially what the case is. Is, is that, that the case? It, it, it seems to be. It seems, it, it they seems, act like it, it. It seems here in the United States that somehow people believe that the, uh, the states get their power from the federal government, the uh, towns get their power from the state government, and if you don't pay your property taxes, then you deserve to uh, you know, have your property taken away. That sounds like rent to me, doesn't it? An eviction, sure does. being evicted from your property, it sounds like you're a renter, not an owner. owner. But they tell me, Mark, I asked the bureaucrats here in Keene, New Hampshire, that, and they told me that... That it was my property. So maybe they're just saying one thing and doing another. They don't even understand the difference. Yeah. I mean, the, but the distinctions it should be there. My property taxes aren't that high, but if I don't pay the couple thousand dollars a year on my property... I'm Three gonna... years is what it takes for them to take it around here. Yeah, from what supposedly. I anyway, last November, the clique calling itself the government of Richland County voted to steal Bayless's 18-acre plot because he had declined to pay $5,737 in property taxes between 2000 and 2006. Until 2000, Bayless had... That's dut- not much property tax. He had dutifully paid out the protection money demanded by the Camorra County bureaucrats, but found himself in trouble anyway. Why? Well, the county sheriff sicked his deputies on Bayless to deliver a tax delinquency notice, despite the fact that he'd already paid the first of two installments to the town treasurer. So what happened? A paperwork snafu. Uh, Happens all the time. Yep. Government bureaucrats forgot to file something somewhere, an arrest warrant or whatever. Not, I guess it wasn't an arrest warrant, but in this case it was a uh, notice. One of their little pieces of paper that they send out to... They love those things. Yep, their tax delinquency notice. So that's why they uh, came out there at one point. They'll never bother giving you a telephone call, by the way. It's, ba- it's just not, it's not worth their time to, right. uh, to talk to the, 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 the subjects. Bayless was understandably frustrated by the bureaucratic foul-up and infuriated by the serene arrogance displayed by the deputies when they trespassed on his posted property. Now, this isn't the time that there were any shots traded. This was just them delivering that notice to him. In a nice bit of mimicry, Bayless had put up a sign announcing that those who entered his land had to pay a $5,000 land use fee to obtain an entry permit. So after the deputies left, Bayless sent the county a bill demanding payment of the delinquent $5,000 fee. Now, this is a futile gesture, of course, but I'm I'm trying without success, says Greg, to identify a moral argument against what Bayless did. It was his land owned free and clear since 1979. He was the sole inhabitant and sovereign of his own little polity. In anything other than a strictly positivist sense, why couldn't he charge for access to his land? Disney World charges for access to their land. I, I don't see why he couldn't. Fanciful. Sounds to me like the the police trespassed and uh, trespassed and uh, they owe him. And, and <laughs> you know they, they as long as they, they can read. If they can read, then you know the, the, the thing is is they don't believe they they are our rulers. They don't believe right. for a second that they um you they know they don't have liability yeah, like we they, do. They don't. Fanci- you can believe that the cops would go on, into Disney World if they felt like they needed to go sure. into Disney World too, and they wouldn't pay anything. Fanciful as Bayless's demand of the Richland County government may have been, that government's culpable neglect also handed him a solid incontestable grievance in that. They he paid the tax and they said that he didn't. <laughs> and kind of like it's it's like Waco except without the tanks. Yeah. Hey, thanks. Burned to the ground. Yep. Burned up the man's house.
Having conquered such a menacing adversary, the local Homeland Security affiliate took a victory lap. Fist jabs and chest bumps were exchanged, beers were hoisted in triumph, press releases were joyously disseminated. The battle-damaged Bearcat itself was put on display in La Crosse County, whose sheriff's department had purchased the vehicle with a federal Homeland Security grant. You see, the purchase of the Bearcat by the Sheriff's Department has been controversial because it had been arranged without the County Board of Supervisors being notified. So much for civilian control over the military, even at the county government level. Apparently, only the Sheriff and a couple of his cronies were aware of the grant and how it was spent. Now, after the purchase became known, the county supervisor quite sensibly suggested it be turned over to the local National Guard unit. And this provoked a theatrical display of pious outrage from Supervisor Carl Halverson, a former sheriff. He simpered, don't we care about these law enforcement officers? Boy, sometimes I think I'm on Mars. So what did that board of supervisors do as a result of the sheriff's department going above their heads to authorize this purchase? You know, you, we'll find you out in moments. I can't write stories this good. Yep, Matt, more on the way. Well, this is terrible. Poor Mr. Bayless. More on the way. It's Free Talk Live. Still waiting to hear from somebody who is going to defend property taxes. Somebody who can tell us exactly how, as property owners, both you and my... Um, and I, Mark, are both property owners. I don't think or, I own my property. Or, the town can take it away anytime they want. Well, we'd like to think we're, we've gone ahead and paid a whole lot of money to, uh, to have these plots of land and houses that we believe are, at least, would like to believe are ours. But if you would like to tell us otherwise, perhaps you can uh, fill us in and actually tell us that we are, in fact, subjects, that we don't actually own our own property, and that we are owned by the state. Uh, would love for you to dial in and let us know exactly how it is that the obligation uh, came, obligation came about to pay these things called property taxes. Now, Mr. Robert Bayless in Wisconsin had a uh, pretty good objection to paying property taxes. The government had come, come along and blown up his uh, the pump that operated his well when they were doing some blasting for some road work outside of his property, and or I guess right up next to his property, and they refused to replace the pump. They refused to fix the destruction that they had caused. And as a result, Mr. Bayless decided to start withholding taxes from these people. Then, a few years later, they came in with a uh, armed gang of thugs calling themselves government police, and they stole Mr. Bayless out of his home and burned it to the ground. So that's where we were, and we were talking about some of the equipment that they used. Just kind of an interesting aside here. This is from freedominourtime.blogspot.com, where William Norman Grigg is telling us about the Bearcat, which is an armed, is basically an armored truck, an, an armed attack vehicle with gun ports and a turret on it that these police departments, several police departments in the Wisconsin area at least, have. Many police departments across the country have similar devices. Police departments all across the country got grants from Homeland Security to, to spend on th- things Crap just like, like this. That. You know, these Bearcats, which are armed assault vehicles, I guess to be, to be perpetrating armed assault on American people. So, that's what they're being used for. So there's kind of an interesting little behind-the-scenes thing in the world of Wisconsin politics where they found out that the Bearcat that the county had was purchased without the knowledge of the oversight committee, of the, the town government people, the elected people. The people that handle all of the, you know, all of the uh, purchasing. Right. So, uh, so what happened? Well, a bunch of the sheriffs got upset that one of the ca- a county supervisors suggested they turn it over to the National Guard. And the Board of Supervisors then issued a resolution authorizing the purchase after the fact. Of course, the county sheriff and other local clients of the Homeland Security State believe that the Bearcat purchase was entirely validated by the successful siege of Robert Bayless's home. Of course, the Bearcat acquisition, like the purchase of hundreds of thousands of dollars of high-tech gear with federal funds, was justified as a counter-terrorist measure. As if the minions of the omnipotent troglodyte Osama bin Laden regarded rural Wisconsin to be a critical target of the global jihad. The inaugural use to which, uh, to which that armored, armored assault vehicle was put was much more illustrative of the priorities and function of the Homeland Security State, which is to maintain terror, not only the politically profitable fear of outsiders, but the tacit fear that commands submission to the state's demands. The amount Bayless owed was less than trivial, but his defiance, rooted in a very plausible set of grievances, could have proven contagious if not properly dealt with. And it's it's just exemplified by the uh, the statement you can't fight city hall. That's what they want you to believe. As helicopters circled bese- uh, Bayless's besieged property in the distance, and smoke arose from his ruined home, a resident of a nearby town of Viola commented to a reporter, "This could happen to anybody." 
And that's precisely the message the local Homeland Security affiliate meant to send. And as long as Americans continue to be frightened of these government people and what they could possibly do, they'll never stand up and be the free people that they should be. But we are going to see it happen. It is going to happen. Things of it have already begun with people starting to non-cooperate in various different little ways, and I imagine those will get bigger. And we can talk more about on the way in the future, but let's go to your phone calls. Brian in Rhode Island, you're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Brian. Yes, I think you're overreacting. Well, well, who? Uh, You are. Why? You're you're accusing, I mean, this the heavy-handed language that you're speaking out against the government is, I never heard anything like this on the radio. Well, wait a minute. Don't you think you'd be heavy-handed if somebody burned your house down? Yeah, but did he break the law? Didn't you say that he that he he uh, wasn't uh, cooperating and wasn't didn't pay his taxes? Well, let's put aside the issue that he never agreed to the tax scheme in the first place, and no, neither did I. Let's put that aside for a moment and remind you that his well, well was blown up, sir, by the county to... government. The county government blew up his well and refused to replace it. So he decided to, that he wasn't going to pay them taxes anymore. Doesn't that make sense? No, it doesn't because. I don't understand what you're saying. Well, you the, mean, when the founding fathers decided that the government, um, that the government of England was no longer servicing their needs, they stopped paying their taxes first. Don't you drive on roads? Don't you? Aren't you <laughs> glad you're defended Such from a uh, from the uh, foreigners? Sir, they the stole for- this the man's property. The foreigners are coming to get me. <laughs> but, yeah, they stole these. They, these aren't foreigners. I need to be defended from. It's these people down the street calling themselves government that are willing to steal my property from me and burn my house to the ground, which but is what they did to this pro- man. It's not yours. This the property oh. is on lane from the. It actually the government owns it. You I mean, really? I you have, when they buy yeah, it? Yeah. How'd that you have work? A deed. I understand. You know, you have a deed and everything, but the, the, the government settles. I mean, that's the that's where the buck stops. And I'm so sorry. The, I mean, you can you can so say you all, own so it. So wait a minute. Are you telling me, sir, that ev- every one of us are actually serfs? We're actually subjects and slaves to the state. Is that what you're telling me? Well, if it sounds good to you. No, that doesn't sound good. I don't accept it. I'm a free man. How do you feel about that? Well, we're all free as long no, as you're no. not the we're free as, if you we're free the as long as we don't. Go we're, ahead, we're only free in our minds, sir. Then you're not free. Well, we, you will be pursued and, and, and arrested. But I didn't agree. I don't consent to the government, so it's not my law. You it's know, in, your law, sir. In, in Germany once, it was against the law. Of course, you live here. You, you live here. You don't have to consent, but you obey, you obey, you obey the law. Yeah, the Jews lived arrested. in Germany, too. You, you know, there, at one time, it was against the law to be Jewish in Germany. Was it okay because they were the government? In, at one time, um, in this country, it was okay for white people to own black people. Actually, black people own black people, too. It was okay to own black people as slaves, and it was the law. That got well, corrected. That got corrected. It, it got corrected. Do you yeah. know why? Because people stood up and said, no more of this crap. And I said, and I it this man who stood up and said, government. no more of this crap as a hero. Why do you, well, how come you don't want to pay the government? Because the government doesn't do anything for me. Don't you drive on the road? Don't you have a car? Uh, in my town, I don't drive on any town roads, no. I but drive you on pay a state gas road. taxes when and you go to the gas Why, why do I have to pay for the, ta- the roads that I don't drive if on? If you get sick, if you don't have any money, you go to the hospital, the, the government pays for it. But the government doesn't pay for it. The hospital pays for it because they mandated, that the, the government mandated the hospital had to treat me. I, I just don't understand. Keep swinging, it. Brian. Keep trying. Go ahead. Give us another one. Well, again, like I said, if you obey the law and don't break the law like Bayless So did, if, wait a minute, so you're saying if we're good little slaves and we do whatever it is our masters in government tell us, then right. the masters in government will let us live our happy little lives here until we croak. That's what you're saying? That's it in a nutshell. Yeah. Now, well, wait that a, sucks. Before, before you go on, if, if, they, uh, if, if uh, somebody sent me to work every day and took all my money away from me, would I be their slave? He's already telling you you're a slave, um, Mark. He's already said you're a slave. If they took all my money and question. sent me to work. What was the question? If somebody sent me to work every day at the pain, uh, the, the threat of violence and took all my money at the end of the week, would I be their slave? Yeah. Okay. Under those circumstances, if somebody, yeah. if, so, if I go to work and somebody takes half of my wages, what am I? You're a taxpayer. Right. <laughs> That's right. So you understand that that means that a, ha- a taxpayer is a slave, right? No, 
No, I don't follow your logic That's at all. right, of course, because it would possibly disturb your happy little rose-colored glasses world. Thank you for the call. 800-259-9231. The fact is, the government treats, the government people treat us like we're their serfs and their slaves.